In this video, we're going to put the linings in. But this is the last opportunity that I have to do sanding on the inside of the instrument without anything in the way, like linings or popsicle stick braces or those sorts of things. So I'm going to take advantage of that right now. I've got a little bit of 220 wrapped around a rubber eraser. I'm going to take care of the inside before I do anything else. <laughs> Because the lining is straight and the side has already been profiled, you'll see that some of the lining is sticking up, but right at the waist, which would be the highest point in the dish, it's pretty tight, but it sort of tapers up and around as you get further outside the dish. I'm going to take this off with my planer before I go back to the dish. A pencil line on the side will let me know right away if I've gotten all the way down with my plane. Now that I've got the top to the proper radius, I've flipped the whole mold around and put it on top of the 15 foot radius dish. What I want to do first here is to profile the sides before I put the linings on, much in the same way I did on the top. In this case though, I've got a significant amount of material to take off because I had my sides oversized to make sure that if I needed a little bit of room, had to make a correction, I had some room to do it. So it's a whole lot faster to take this off with a plane, but how do I measure to that? What I've done is I've, I've measured from the uh, face to the back at the neck, less the thickness of the back and the top, and I did the same thing for the tail to the dimension that I want, took it straight off the plan. Then I used a combination square to make a mark on the inside and another one on the inside of the tail, and used a shim like this, just a little angled shim, uh, at the next side, because it's heavier, you can see it's got a sort of a teeter-totter thing. It just sort of relaxes to this side. And I put the shim in there until the mark at the neck was equal in height from the dish to the mark that was on the tail. Turned out to be about 13 sixteenths in this case. Small block of wood, 13 sixteenths to the center of where the pencil is, and I'll use that to scribe around the inside on the dish. Thank you. 
went all the wild morning, I went all my way to school. Hey, I went all the wild morning, I went all my way to school. Curved lining is pretty flexible, but I got some tight curves to make here. I've already got the other piece in right now, but uh, to start here, I'm going to start up at the neck block, and I've got this extra wide piece of curving right here. So I'm going to go ahead and just score it with a knife, almost cut right through, and then it'll break off nice and cleanly. I'm going to start by putting it into the upper bout, and if I just start pushing this in, one of these curves is going to break first before the other ones do. And then it's going to get very weak. And it's going to take the brunt of all of the pressure that I'm putting on this and possibly crack. I want to see if I can do this in one piece. So I've got a fairly tight upper bout here. I'm going to take this and I'm going to purposefully break every joint. Come on. Within the upper bout towards the inside. I'm going to pre-stress it, pre-break it, so that none of them are stronger than the other. Once I've got that so it's nice and soft and fits in there easily, I'm going to start where the waist is. I'm going to do the same thing the opposite direction. Pre-break every single joint carefully all the way around the waist section. The lower bout is pretty gentle. I don't think I'm going to need to do that. I'm just going to hold that in place here. Yeah, it's pretty gentle here. I don't need to do the pre-stressing thing. Well, my pocket bill and on both sides of the street. Well, my pocket bill and on both sides of the street. Getting on in the evening, I'm going to let this thing dry overnight and then run her through the beast one more time and we'll move on from there. Yeah!